every year I have clients come back from their summer vacations and I am like, what in the world happened? They got a ton of sun, chlorine from the pool, and their hair is dried out from salt water, and maybe it's even a little bit green. So let's pretend that you're about to go on a two week vacation to the Four Seasons Bora Bora. Here's how you can keep your hair in one piece while you're rocking that two piece. Of protection, I mean UV protection. Vacation rule number one, the sun will damage your hair just like the sun will damage your skin. Ah, that's good to know. I'm definitely using this when I go to Bora Bora. You're going to Bora Bora this summer? I was just making it up. Oh no, but I'm going one day and this is gonna be very important for me. Christina, it's not always about you. Oh, but it is. It always is. You're probably used to seeing a sunburn when you get skin damage, but a lot of my clients are shocked when they come back with a lot of sun damage to their hair because you can't see it the way you can a sunburn. Here's how it works. Your hair has three layers. The outside layer is called the cuticle and it's the most important layer because its job is to protect the inside of the hair shaft. And as long as the outside layer of your hair is in good shape, your hair is going to be healthy and everything on the inside is going to be protected. But when UV rays come in and hit that outside layer, if you let the sun do its thing for long enough, it's going to erode the outside layer of your hair, leaving it unprotected. The technical term for this is called hair damage, but around here, we like to call it sun eats your hair, chips away on it until it ruins your life disease. And on top of all that, the sun is going to beat the color out of your hair that you just spent so much money to make perfect. Your hair color comes from pigment in the cortex layer of your hair, which is right here. And it contains a pigment called melanin that gives your hair its color. And what happens is the UV rays from the sun come down and penetrate the outside layer of your hair, no jokes. And this starts breaking down the melanin, which fades the color of your hair. If you have dyed hair, it's even more susceptible to this. The dye is broken down pretty easily by the UV rays. So you wanna be really careful here or your color can get kind of funky like the time you used sun in in high school. The bottom line here is that if your hair has changed color from sun exposure, you've gotten enough to do damage. But at the same time, I don't wanna make you paranoid. If you're walking around outside for like 15 minutes around the block, it's not a big deal. This is really for when you're gonna be spending a lot of time outside in direct sunlight. There's one last thing here. Dermatologists say that damage from the sun can cause your hair to go gray prematurely. What they say is that it accelerates the graying process. But to be honest, I'm not really sure if I buy this. First off, how would you know when a hair is supposed to go gray in the first place? You can't just swing in, look at a gray hair and be like, oh, this one's early. It wasn't supposed to be gray for another six months. It doesn't work like that. And second off, your hair is dead. It's like a fingernail. Information does not travel up the hair into your scalp where the hair follicle is. Your hair is not able to give reports like, oh, we're getting hammered down here by the sun. Please turn us gray to protect us. It seems like complete silliness to me, but I'm not a doctor. Make your own decisions. Personally, I just don't think sun damage factors into grayness. Well, after all that, I don't think I even want to go anymore. You'll be just fine. Let me show you a couple tricks. Okay, give me the tricks. Let's see. So now that we know the sun damages hair, makes it dry, screws up the color, we're not going to let that happen. So the first line of defense is products with UV protection. There's plenty out there, but remember what we said earlier, the sun wears down everything it touches. When you wear sunscreen, you have to keep reapplying it because the sun will wear it down and UV protectants from your hair are no different. They have to be reapplied over and over. But what is different with hair is you don't wash it as often as you wash your body. And if you keep loading up all those UV products on your hair, it's gonna feel gross and producty, which means you're gonna have to wash it every day. I'd also keep in mind that there aren't any great UV protection products out there. There's some made specifically for UV protection in the sun, and then there's some that offer it in combination with other benefits, but neither are very strong if you ask me. Well, luckily, no one's asking you. You just asked me 70 seconds ago. True. How often should we reapply the UV protection? I would reapply them every 45 minutes or so because they aren't that effective. 
In general, it's much safer to just use a sun hat. It's 100% protection from your hair and you are in this situation where you have to remember to keep putting back on the UV product or else your hair is gonna get ruined. And since it's not a product and doesn't weigh your hair down at all, it doesn't make your hair feel gross. It just gives you hat hair. At the end of the day, it's totally up to you. Do your thing, but those are the two best options available to you. Pools. All right, so on your vacation, you're definitely going into the pool unless you're weird like me and refuse to get in. You need to know the pool water doesn't just mess up your style, it messes everything up. Chlorine is public hair enemy number one. It should literally have its own wanted poster. Chlorine is for killing things. Literally, that's why it's in the pool. It's used to keep your pool clean by killing what I call all the nasty stuff. We gotta go to the bathroom. Just enjoying the water. So we already have the sun trying to damage and dry out our hair. Now we have this chlorine character trying to kill everything and things are starting to stack up against us at this point. For all my chemistry nerds out there, you already know it'll strip the natural oils to keep your hair healthy. It can even change the natural color of your hair just like the sun was trying to do earlier. And copper in the pool water can even start to turn your hair green. Can't blame that one on chlorine. That's on you, coppers. The coppers are always trying to get us. None of that is cool. Let's not be super dramatic here, but as you can see already, a lot is working against us at this point. So we're gonna need a few tricks. The first thing that you can do to protect your hair is go to the little shower thingy that's always next to the pool and get your hair wet with tap water. That way, when you go in the pool, chlorine water can't just rush right in because your hair is already full of tap water. The next step is to seal your hair off from the chlorine water as much as possible. You know those cheap drugstore brands that I tell you to never ever buy? I want you to go out and get the cheapest, worst leave-in conditioner you can possibly find. <laughs> You're gonna take that cheap leave-in conditioner and start lathering it all over your hair. What that's gonna do is form a waterproof barrier around your hair that stops the chlorine from coming in. But I want you to keep in mind that it's not a permanent barrier. As soon as you start swimming, as soon as you get in that water, it's gonna slowly take the leave-in conditioner off of your hair and expose it to the chlorine water. So if you swim for a long time, you're gonna need to reapply it when you get out for a drink or whatever like that. But if you just do a short little swim, no big deal, you're good to go. Now, after you've asserted your dominance and beat your brother in a chicken fight, as soon as you're done swimming, go straight to that outside shower thing again and use it to rinse all the chlorinated water out of your hair. You wanna get it out of there as soon as possible. And then after it's totally rinsed out of your hair, get that cheap leave-in conditioner and put it in your hair. It's gonna be way better than just letting it dry out naturally. Keep some moisture in there. Your hair is gonna need it. So to stop any additional damage, I highly recommend that you switch up your wash schedule. You are swimming in the pool in the morning, laying out at lunch, and swimming with pigs in the afternoon. Just kidding, I think that's the Bahamas, and I'm like the last person on the planet that hasn't done that yet. Anyway, my point is that your hair routine is going to be thrown way off. You got it wet, then you got it dry, you got a massage, it was amazing, but you got all this lotion in your hair. At the end of the day, your hair is going to feel completely gross and dry, but you're still gonna wash it anyway, even though you washed it the night before. But whatever you do, do not give in to that temptation. Your hair is gonna be like this at the end of every day on your vacation. And if you wash it every day, you're gonna compound your problems and make everything worse. If you watched any of my videos before, you already know the shampoo strips moisture from your hair. That means that the absolute last thing your hair needs is to be washed because it's already so dry and already had all the oils stripped out of it. So here's what I want you to think about doing instead. Wash your hair with conditioner. That's it. And I don't mean just like, don't forget your conditioner. I mean, only use conditioner. It's gonna feel really, really weird at first, but I promise you, skip the shampoo. No shampoo for you. No soup for you. It's called co-washing. The only downside to co-washing is that it doesn't remove oil from your hair. But in this case, that is totally fine and exactly what we want because you just spent the entire day stripping the natural healthy oils out of your hair. 
So conditioner will do the job. Now let's say you've turned into a pro and you've been co-washing for the past three days with a ton of success. Good job. Eventually your hair is going to start to feel oily because it will build up. And once you feel that your hair is getting a little oily up there, that is when you're going to start introducing your shampoo again. But again, it's not going to be every day. It's going to be once every couple days. So most people will be like co-wash day one, co-wash day two, and then regular wash with shampoo on day three in a cycle like that. Everyone's schedule is going to vary a little bit based on how quickly your scalp gets oily and how much you're in the chlorine water and how much you're in the ocean water. The moral of the story is to never use shampoo unless you can feel that there's already a layer of excess oil on your scalp. Otherwise, it's just going to strip all the natural oils that keep your hair healthy. Vacation prep. One thing I would really suggest is prepping your hair before you leave for your vacation. Because if you go in with dry hair, you're going to come out with some major issues. By prepping, all I mean is that you use your hair mask on the wash day before you leave to go to Bora Bora or wherever you're going. That's going to give your hair a little boost, put some extra healthy oils in your hair so you can start out ahead of the game. It's also really important that when you're packing at 3 a.m. the day before your flight and your cats and dogs are trying to get in that suitcase, remember to bring a hair mask on your vacation with you. Like we said earlier, everything is working against you. Your hair is going to do everything it possibly can to dry out on you. You're going to need everything you possibly can. A hair mask will really help to prevent all that dryness. And don't be afraid to use more hair oil than you normally would if you notice that your hair is getting drier, which is almost guaranteed to be. If you don't have a hair mask, check out my recommended product list and get you a good one. You'll be glad you did. Okay, but I'm more of an ocean girl. Is the ocean safe? It's actually safer than a pool. Really? Good to know. But that's only if you don't count the sharks. He always ruins it every single time. Ocean water. All right, let's talk ocean water really quickly. Ocean water won't turn your hair green like the pool water can, and there's way less pee in there. But it will strip the natural healthy oils out of your hair, and we already know the salt can affect moisture, so it's going to dehydrate your hair and your skin. Dry hair is brittle, it tangles, prone to damage, breakage, and it's really hard to work with. So knowing that, ideally you do the exact same routine as you did at the pool. All you're going to do is wet your hair with tap water before you get in and use a leave-in conditioner to form a barrier around your hair. But it's a lot harder to find tap water down by an ocean, so I get it if you're not able to do that. And luckily, the ocean isn't all bad. It can make your natural waves, your natural curls look pretty good. And there's something about the salt and minerals in the ocean that just give your hair a different look in a good way sometimes. But all the good stuff comes with moderation. Like you swim for a little bit and then you rinse it out and go back to normal. If you're not able to rinse it out immediately and you leave it in your hair, you're going to pay for it later. So please make sure you rinse it out as soon as possible and use a leave-in conditioner to make sure your hair doesn't turn into a tumbleweed. And I also want to give everyone a quick disclaimer that this is not anything like a sea salt spray. Salt sprays are bad news. They only work for people who have perfect blonde hair. If you have perfect blonde hair in the first place, you don't need salt spray. So anyway, moving on. Humidity. All right, it's not shocking that in the summer, the heat and humidity go way up, which means there's more water in the air. And in general, you're going to be sweating more, especially if you live in Florida like we do. All of that means that your hair is naturally going to get dirty more quickly and you're going to need to wash it more often. Let's just say that you're used to washing every four days. It's totally normal during the summer for you to go down to washing only every three days. There's no need to freak out or blame it on any new products or boyfriends or anything like that. It's just for the summer, totally normal, back to life. You also don't wanna follow any of that advice that tells you to switch to new products during the summer to keep your hair more hydrated or whatever the stuff that they like to say. Keep your normal routine with the products that have always worked for you. Keep it the same. Or if your products weren't working for you before, check out my recommended product list. It'll get you started on your healthy hair journey. And it even has a quiz to help you figure out your hair type. All right, thank you so much for hanging out. Have an amazing summer. Take care. Of that hair. Take care of that hair.